Good morning. We gather this morning on Sunday, May 16th, 2021, as the communities of Mount Calgary Evangelical Lutheran Church and St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Nova Scotia on the South Shore. We gather and welcome all guests who are joining us for service today. I am Pastor Brooklyn and I will be leading service on organ and piano, you will hear Rebecca, and our readers for today are Alex, Ernie, and Marty. As we begin, we invite you to breathe in the grace of God, to be still and know the presence of the Holy Spirit. Together we pause to prepare our heads and hearts for worship. A new day has begun. Hope wins. A fresh way is granted. Faith wins. Today you have the opportunity to do something new. Hope wins. Christ is entering your life in a new way. Faith wins. Come let us worship God who is inviting us into life in a new way. A way that transcends death a way of hope and faith. Love wins. Let us worship Christ, who ever overcame death to new life. We turn to confession and forgiveness. Three in one God, creator, child, and Holy Spirit, we give thanks for your mercy and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Loving God, Forgive us. We have neglected to see the face of Christ in our neighbor. We have walked past the person begging on the street and neglected to recognize their humanity. We have become estranged from humanity, forgetting the web of life connects us all. Forgive us. We are quick to anger, to cast judgment, and our words pierce like swords when we speak from these places. We let fear, doubt, and unknowingness guide our actions. Forgive us. We confess our self-centeredness, need to succeed in capitalistic like thinking has turned us from you and your message of justice and love. Forgive us, God who meets us in the face of each person we meet, who paints the sky with colors that calm the soul, who creates a soundscape of rushing rivers, who gives grace to the world through the winds of the Holy Spirit. Open our hearts to be transformed and changed. You are forgiven. Through the love of God, in the name of God, your sins are forgiven. Baptism remains forever. God's love is here. Let us pray. Inspiring God, guide us to be agents of change. Knowing that our decisions, our actions and inactions affect all people. Help us to have the courage and strength to move forward to let our hearts and minds be overflowing with love, grace, and a deep awareness that you are with us, guiding us on the journey. Compassionate God, three in one. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Precious love, your ascended Son promised the gift of holy power. Send your spirit of revelation and wisdom that in the blessed freedom of hope we may witness to the grace of forgiveness and sing songs of joy with the peoples of earth to the one who makes us one body. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Luke writes, In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote you about all that Jesus did and taught, from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has said by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the world. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Word of God, Word of Life. Psalm 47 God has gone up with a shout. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. Who subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. Who chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom God loves. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations, God is enthroned on high. The nobles of the peoples have gathered as the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, who is to be highly exalted. God has gone up with a shout. Our second reading today comes from Ephesians Chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put his power in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, and power, and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him 
who fills all in all. Words of God. Words of life. The gospel for today is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 53. On the day of his ascension, Jesus leaves his disciples with a commission, a blessing, and a promise of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until they have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This week we celebrate the ascension of our Lord. This is a feast where Jesus, 40 days after rising from the dead, ascends to the heavenly kingdom. This sermon will be based out of our first reading from Acts. For the past couple Sundays, the gospel readings have been preparing us for Jesus' ascension. And likewise, Jesus was preparing the disciples for his ascension. A few weeks back in the gospel readings, there was a call to witness. The gospel today also invites us to witness as it invited the disciples to be a witness. The Greek translation of witness has three possible nuances. The few, first one is a witness in a legal sense. The second one is of historical sense. And the third one is a witness in an ethical sense. The ethical sense of witness invites the disciples and us to go out into the world and be physical, living, breathing witnesses of God, of God's grace and love in the world, to watch events, to observe, and then when safe and appropriate, to act, to lay one's life down for another. Two weeks ago, we heard about having a really intimate relationship with Jesus. Jesus delivered a message to the disciples where he is the vine and the disciples are the branches. A message that highlighted the coming closeness between Jesus and humanity. That Christ will flow in us, through us, and around us, bringing us life-giving nutrients, as a vine does a branch. Then, last Sunday, Jesus called the disciples to go out and love the world, giving them the commandment, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. He spoke about his joy becoming the disciples' joy. He illustrated that when the disciples go out and love one another, when they follow that commandment there in that love, they will find Jesus too. Today we hear that Jesus tells the disciples, you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and you are God's witnesses. Then Jesus ascends on a cloud to the kingdom, to the kingdom of heaven. This probably would have been quite troubling for the disciples, standing there, watching your leader, your guide, your friend, leave you, go up to the clouds, I have images of the disciples running, jumping up and down, just trying to grab a hold of Jesus, trying to bring him back, hold on for one more second, bring him back for one last conversation, one last meal, one last hug. The disciples seem to stand there, 
Mouth wide open, looking at the cloud, shocked. They almost forget what the next step is. And I think, I think Jesus knew that disciples would need some help. They knew, he knew they'd react this way. He graciously has two men appear to them to remind them of their calling, to remind them of the lessons Jesus has been teaching them. The men say to the disciples, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up to heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Now the disciples have two choices. Stay frozen in their disbelief and their grief and keep looking upwards at the cloud, waiting for Jesus, hoping that he will come and hoping he will come to that same direct spot or to follow Jesus' instruction to go out into the world and to love the world, to love their neighbor, to love their friend. Flipping to today, we have two choices too. I have heard quite a bit lately about people around Canada and the States discerning what the church will look like post COVID-19. How will the church change? What will it look like? Will our church survive? What are the impacts? What can we do? What are our fears? What are we afraid of? These are great questions to be asking and thinking about. The foresight to look at the future, looking at past trends and current trends, the stats and what they are leading, what they are pointing to, can help us make responsible decisions. However, sometimes we are called to stop looking up at the cloud or looking at the problem of COVID-19 and to go out into the world and follow Christ's commandment to love. When we look at Christ's life, he was healing people, feeding people, caring for people. He was accompanying with them, accompanying them on the journey of life. Christ was expanding the table, adding more seats, inviting more people, opening up the doors wide. He wasn't saying, no, we're full. This is only for a few select people. We don't know when COVID-19 will be over and past history. We don't know how it will impact the church and affect the church and us as individuals. We cannot control that. But when, what we can control is how we respond currently. Put your trust in God. Give Jesus your worries, your anxieties, your burdens. Jesus has big shoulders and he will bear the weight of our worries for us. Listen to Dr. Strain. Wear your mask, social distance. Stay at home if you can. And when we are feeling tired and worrisome and stressed from all that COVID-19 brings us, remember to turn inwards. Remember where your nutrients comes from. Remember that we are connected to Christ as a vine is a branch. Open up your heart. Invite Jesus in. Let that life-giving connection, that connection, that closeness of a vine and a branch flow through you. Ask God to work and live in you. Be open to the Spirit. Be ready to go out and find new ways to love the world while we go through this troubling time. Ways to accompany people that still allow for social distancing. Ways to expand the table, 
to feed, to heal, to care for the world while we respect the medical practices and instructions that the government gives us. We can still find ways to be a witness in this time. We can still find ways to go out and love one another. Because when we do this, when we go out and follow that call, that commandment to love people, Jesus will be there. Jesus will be there in ways we can't even imagine. In ways we don't even know. And then our lives will be transformed. Amen. Confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn to the prayers of intercession. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to receive our prayers and answer in steadfast love. You call the whole church on earth to worship and bless you. Empower your church to bear joyful witness to your love, may you know him in Jesus Christ. To you, O oh God, we lift these prayers. You have fashioned a habitat for all of your creatures, and you will fill the earth with your glory. Give rain where it is needed, and rescue from floods where it is needed. Mend what we have torn in the fabric of creation, and replenish and nourish your world. To you, O oh God, we lift these prayers. In the majesty of your love, you rule the world with justice and mercy. Give those in authority the spirit of your love, so that all who are hungry and poor receive food and resources, and all people flourish and live in peace. Especially God, we ask you to send peace, love, and understanding to Israel and Palestine. May your peace reign. To you, O oh God, we lift these prayers. 
You heal those who are sick and bind up the brokenhearted. Attend to the cares and needs of the hurting and hopeless in our congregation, community, workplaces, schools, and families, especially those we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Ruth, Lawrence, Colton, Jocelyn, Stu, To you, O oh God, we lift these prayers. You have gathered us in this congregation. Enlighten our hearts and give us a share of the immeasurable greatness of your love. Help us love one another. Be reconciled where we are divided and share the riches of your grace with our neighbors. To you, O oh God, we lift these prayers. In raising Christ from the dead, you put your great power to work in the world. Raise us and all who have died in faith with Christ. We remember saints in our lives and in our community. Thank you for their gifts among us. To you, O oh God, we lift these prayers. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in the never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I encourage you to take a moment now and share the peace if you are worshiping with people or to take some time throughout the day and call a neighbor or friend, a family member, and share the peace with them. Today we will pray the Maori Lord's Prayer. The Maori are Indigenous people from New Zealand. Eternal Spirit, Life Giver, Pain Bearer, Love Maker, Source of all that is and shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is Heaven, The hallowing of your name echo through the universe, The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world, Your heavenly will be done by all created beings, your commonwealth of peace and freedom, sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. A reading from John Richardson, titled, Blessing the Distance. It is a mystery to me how as the distance between us grows, the larger this blessing becomes. As if the shape of it depends on absence, as if it finds its form, not by what it can cling to, but by the space that arcs between us. As this blessing makes its way, first it will cease to measure itself by time. Then it will realize how attached it has become to this place, where we have lived, where we have learned to know one another in proximity and presence. Next, this blessing will abandon the patterns in which it moved, the habits that helped it recognize itself, the familiar pathways it traced. Finally, this blessing will touch its fingers, fingers to your brow, your eyes, your mouth. It will hold your beloved face in both its hands, and then it will let you go. It will lose you into your life. It will leave you each hindering thing until all that breathes between us is blessing and all that meets between us is grace. Please stand as you are able to receive the blessing for today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news.